Hi people, so I just got off work and I thought that I'd go ahead and try to film this quickly um, so that I can get this video put together because I've been editing it. Um, so I went down to Tunica, Mississippi with my dad. Actually it's Robinsonville, Mississippi, but everybody calls it Tunica even though it's not really the real Tunica, but whatever. So um, we went down there with the intention of going to the casinos. Originally we were going to go to Panama City Beach, Florida because they had some good deals, but I have this thing where like um, when we book rooms for Panama City Beach, we try to wait until it's closer to the time that we would actually be going because of the weather issue, like when um, the whole Hurricane Michael came through and we had to evacuate back in 2018. So I thought that I would kind of gamble with that and it turns out like before I ever got a chance to really consider like being serious about booking, um, the price is nearly doubled. So that cut that out. So we were like, well, let's go to Tunica because I am going to start, well, this week is like my first like week of really being serious about going back to work um, throughout the week. Uh, fortunately, I don't think I'll be working as many days as I used to back when I worked more of a full schedule, but still. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to be giving up a lot of my free time, but you know, whatever. You got to do what you got to do. Um, the timing's right, so hopefully it'll just be for a few months, so. <laughs> and the little Suki's here with me. But anyway, so I just wanted to get like one last trip out of my system. Um, which this was already planned before I knew that I was going to be going back to work, but whatever. Uh, still, I wanted to get my little trip in. So, Tunica it was, and that was a really long explanation of why I went to Tunica. Um, but anyway, uh, so, I looked into doing the whole New Orleans thing. Like, I want to do this New Orleans road trip where you go down the Natchez Trace down in New Orleans. Um... But, yeah, New Orleans was kind of pricey, too. So, um, and plus, turns out gas, like, jumped up in price. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We're paying over $4 a gallon for gas, which is absolutely ridiculous. Anywho, so, and by the way, Tunica is, like, 250 miles away from here. So, I mean, it's not, like, super far, but still far enough to, you know, be out of state, at least. And... And also Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge were in the consideration, but the place that we like to stay at in Pigeon Forge did not have any vacancies or else they're closed because they're remodeling or something's going on where we couldn't get a room there. So it's like if we couldn't get a room at Pigeon Forge, then just scratch the whole trip. Um, I'm getting really congested. I have allergies really bad. <sighs> I'm surprised I haven't like started choking or sneezing at this point. Anywho. So, again, Tunica it was. So, um, also, I had been wanting to take my dad down to Clarksdale, Mississippi, because some time ago, I saw that Ozzy Osbourne, Jack Osbourne, World Detour, sh travel show, road trip show, whatever show that I guess the History Channel created and produced or something. Anyway, I remember there was an episode where... Jack and Ozzy went down to Clarksdale, Mississippi. They were up in Memphis, and which Clarksdale, Mississippi is like 30 minutes from Memphis. Um, just FYI. No, I take that back. Clarksdale would probably be more like an hour and a half from Memphis, just FYI. <sighs> now my battery's gonna die. <sighs> you know what? Forget trying to cut this short. It's just gonna be a long story regardless. So, anyway. So, um, I saw the show. They were in Memphis. Uh... Jack set it up so that they were going down to Clarksdale because that is the place where Robert Johnson sold his soul to the devil. <laughs> so, um, and also another key point to them going to Clarksdale was, um, Jack had, unbeknownst to Ozzy, had a... a harmonica commission and customized for Ozzy by this gentleman named Deke. So, um, my dad is a harmonica guy. He plays like a zillion instruments, but his main instruments are guitar and harmonica and I guess bass and trumpet. Um, but guitar and harmonica are his big instruments. 
he's always had issues with harmonicas like he goes through harmonicas like I don't know like some people go through deodorant okay <laughs> it's just like it, it, there's always something going on with a harmonica but he has so many of them <laughs> and so um through the show I found out about Deke Harp who has this harmonica shop and so we you know I told my dad about it and I was like hey this would be a cool trip at some point that we could take we could go down there to the harmonica shop um so we did uh <laughs> and really I think my dad was looking more for to having Deke work on a harmonica for him or fix one or two of his harmonicas uh <laughs> we'll get into that but also like of course like I said it was the place where um Clark sells the place where Robert Johnson went down to the crossroads and sold his soul to the devil which me having been in music business in college and taking music history classes and different music business related classes um I learned a little bit about Robert Johnson in many of my classes and and plus like I'm into like this whole um conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory stuff uh like we, we listened to the show Coast to Coast AM um my dad got me listening to that show years ago and I remember there used to be this guy who I believe lived here in Nashville um who did all this stuff about the different like I guess you could say conspiracy theories in music and of course music like the 27 club um he wrote a couple of books about the different things the different like weird unexplained things regarding music and the the strange events and the criminal stuff whatnot um but I think the man has since passed away um, but I loved listening to him when he would be on Coast to Coast AM talking about the different stuff. So, anyway, Robert Johnson plays into all this. And also, <laughs> I really was not going to make this a super long video, but I can tell you right now, it's already beyond that point. Um, in the video, how do I want to say this? Okay, so, there's two areas that are known as the crossroads excuse me and apparently there's more than two but I only know of two but I've heard talk since <laughs> since like the day before I went to the trip like that there's more than the two spots but one of them is the tourist spot and you'll hear me talk about this I'm just repeating myself but one is the tourist spot which you will see um, and the other is the spot which was highlighted on the show by a gentleman named Super Chicken, or he goes by Super Chicken, that um, Jack and Ozzy kept seeking out to talk to. Um, but it all kind of links back and together and whatnot because there's also, like, okay, so going back to the show, the gentleman Super Chicken was the grandson of Tommy Johnson. So, from my understanding, and I remember hearing a little bit about this because there's been some confusion over the years, but the way I understand it, Robert Johnson and Tommy Johnson were good friends or friends or acquaintances and whatnot down there. So, Tommy Johnson was already like a guitar player and whatnot, but um, Robert Johnson played guitar, but he was so horrible, like he wanted to play and sing guitar and he'd go and perform in bars, but he was so horrible that people would just up and leave the bars. Like they, they were like, I can't stand this, I'm not going to take this anymore, either you get this guy out or I leave, and so they left. So, um, anyway, the story goes that Robert Johnson had... I guess talked to Tommy Johnson Tommy Johnson told him that hey you can go down to the crossroads and at midnight and there'll be a guy there and you take your guitar and hand him your guitar and he'll tune it and hand it back to you and boom you made a deal with the devil and you'll be able to play guitar so that's how the story goes uh, Robert Johnson went down to the crossroads after midnight and handed his guitar to the devil, devil tuned his guitar, handed it back to him, boom. He was an exceptionally phenomenal guitar player, and I guess it 
allowed him to be a better singer too and whatnot so um as i know it uh robert johnson's kind of like the grandfather of the delta blues but also there's talk that tommy johnson is actually the grandfather of the delta blues and it's also said that tommy johnson originally went down to the crossroads and did what he told robert to do he sold his soul to the devil so so um anyway that's where and i'm gonna try to include clips in this video or i don't know i may break this up into several videos <laughs> because there's so much content i mean there's really not a lot of content but there's a lot of background content to the content i'm going to show and then i i was going to try to put clips of that tv show into this video to kind of show where they went in the show that went to the same place and try to give a little bit of context to it from what was said like um i'm gonna try to have the video clip of super chicken talking about the original crossroads because he is the source of where i know of the original crossroads through the tv show and whatnot so i just want to put that in there because he says in the clip that it's not really like a widely known thing that's more of a local thing that not a lot of people know of I tried looking it up on Google and I didn't I found a few results but I didn't find a lot of results so um and you see all these people like smiling and like I went down to the crossroads but they went down to the tourist crossroads and it's not really like the real crossroads but yet I went to the tourist crossroads knowing it was the tourist crossroads just for the heck of it just for the photo op <laughs> But yeah, anyway, that's going to be all in this and whatnot. And another thing I wanted to do was go to Ground Zero, which is like a club bar sort of place that's like co-owned by Morgan Freeman. But I was down there on a Tuesday and it was closed during the day. So missed out on that. But we did go and eat lunch at Abe's Barbecue, which is at the tourist crossroads. So um <laughs> fun stuff so i just want to talk about deke for a moment because <laughs> i i cannot even believe so um deke first and foremost is phenomenal <laughs> like he is phenomenal so i i almost half expected him to be kind of like you know rushing us in and out and maybe like chatting for a moment but you know just more like let's just take care of business and be on our merry little way like i thought that's how it's going to be but we ended up spending a good while at his place like he was so hospitable let me rephrase that i can't get the word out hospitable to us um he was just a great person so you see him on the tv show he's exactly the same in real life like as he was on the show like my dad and i had the same experience that ozzy and jack had <laughs> like looking back at the footage of the tv show i was like wait a minute <laughs> this is like deja vu so it, it was really cool like he was telling us stories um he and my dad were talking about harmonicas they played harmonica together um he was showing me about the the pre-world war ii harmonicas he was showing us how he tuned the harmonica it's just I, it was fantastic he was so nice um he performed for us which that's what i got on footage i, I felt really awkward at first like I wanted to record in there but at the same time I didn't really want to record because I, I didn't want to make it awkward for him but then my dad's like you should be recording this for YouTube <laughs> yes my dad is the one who's encouraging me to do all this stuff for YouTube um so I, when he offered to perform for us that's when I got the camera out and started recording <laughs> but I just I think <laughs> Well, I know that if my dad had had the opportunity, he would pester that man to death. 
<laughs> because my dad did not want to leave. Um, we ended up leaving because this group of ladies came in and, you know, we didn't want to, like, tie up his time and, like, we, you know, wanted them to have their chance to spend time in there with Deke and talk to Deke. But <laughs> it was just one of those things where, I don't know, it, it went way better than expected. We had a great time. And he was very generous to my dad. He gave my dad a harmonica. My dad ended up buying a harmonica. Um, he showed my dad a bunch of things that my dad didn't know about how to play harmonica because my dad plays a certain way, but Deke plays the other way. And so he was like giving my dad tips and tricks about how to do certain things that he hadn't even thought of doing with the harmonica and giving us advice on like what my dad should like certain harmonicas that my dad would probably like to own and whatnot so he was just great <laughs> like we're like why is this man not like a total superstar out there because he's so talented he is so nice he's entertaining he's just all around a phenomenal guy so um and he <laughs> I also, he was like, let me get you one of these shirts. And so I ended up buying the shirt. It was supposed to be for my dad, but I bought it. And I think that I get more use out of shirts than my dad does. Or I seem to appreciate this shirt more than my dad does. Because my dad didn't, he still can't get the whole Robert Johnson thing straight. He was like, when I was talking about it the other day after coming home about Robert Johnson, he was like, who? I was like, are you kidding me? What do you mean, who? <laughs> like, and I had explained to him, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that guy. He's like, oh, yeah, the guy that we went to the crossroads for. Right, right, right. <laughs> anyway, so this shirt that I got from Deke says, I made a deal with Deke at the crossroads and got my first harmonica. So far, we didn't get our first harmonica. My dad has plenty of harmonicas. <laughs> He just got like his billionth harmonica, <laughs> but it's fantastic and it has like the the highway 61 and 49 which is like the tourist crossroads shop is actually close to the original crossroads so like we passed over the spot going to his shop and I was like wait a minute we're gonna be coming back to the spot here in a moment because this is what I recognize from the television show okay yeah I, I could totally fangirl over Deke <laughs> this whole time my dad's like you need to send the video into the Opry and get him on the Opry <laughs> so um I you know okay so, going back to the Tunica thing, I honestly do not foresee myself going back down to Tunica anymore unless I get free rooms or free play because it was just awful. Um, every time I've been to Tunica, it has gotten progressively worse in regards to casino play and all that mess. Um, so, anyway, linking that back. You know, we'll probably be going down the Clarksdale at some point <laughs> once gas, like, drops back down. Hopefully it will drop back down. Um, surely it will drop back down. It has before. Uh, yeah, but I don't think it would be linked to a Tunica trip unless, like I said, unless I had a free room or a significant amount of free play <laughs> to make it worth the trip. But if we ever do the Natchez um, Trace road trip or just maybe even just a trip specifically for Clarksdale. Or if we ever get to do our Vegas road trip, again, whole gas crisis going on. Um, that would be a good, like, coming back to detour there. That would be a good place to spend the night, actually, if we detoured. Um, actually, no. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Um... Yeah, so let's talk about the casinos in Tunica. The Tunica casinos. First off, I had found out that they tore down two of the casinos since I've been there. One, they completely tore down altogether, Resorts, which was over beside Hollywood Casino and across from Sam's Town. And which that's actually when um, I went down there the last time with my friends, which was back at 
kind of at the end of 2018. It was like the week before I went to Florida um, <laughs> and got chased out by the hurricane. Um, that's where we went there the night that we were there and it was so like, it was very much dead in the casino and I remember my friend Becky, um, we sat at a blackjack table while the dealer kind of like showed her how to play and gave her tips and tricks on how to play, which was pretty cool. But I mean, it shows how dead the place was. So I'm almost not surprised that it closed down, but the fact that they completely tore down, like, but it was a really nice casino. I mean, it wasn't big. And like I said, it wasn't busy that time. I don't think it, it was kind of busy the first time that I went to it, but I think that was because it was <coughs> a Saturday night, either a Friday night or a Saturday night when we were there. So typically your casinos and anywhere is going to be more busy on a weekend night regardless. Um, and so I, I was kind of bummed about that because um, that was in the vicinity of where we were going to stay. We originally were going to stay at Sam's Town, but then I found out that I could get the same deal at Hollywood. And Hollywood has better facilities. <laughs> um, I've stayed at Hollywood once before. We I stayed with my friends. Like when I went with my friends, we stayed at Sam's Town and it wasn't wasn't impressive at all but I've stayed at Hollywood before and which y'all see like the novelty of Hollywood in either this video or one of the other videos I don't know again I don't know how I'm gonna edit this but um yeah so Hollywood has an indoor swimming pool and hot tub so that I mean you, the resort fee is a little bit more expensive than Sam's Town but to me it's worth it um and also like the food places were like a considerable like reason why we chose either one which Sam's Town had more food options not by much <laughs> there's only like two or three options there and only two of them were really open well actually one of them was open the whole time that we would have been there and the other one would have been open like one of the days or one of the nights that we would have been there um and then the other one would, would not have been open during the time that we were there. Uh, yeah. So, but they were kind of like, you know, like the convenient type food. That was, they were kind of similar price for both places. But I thought, oh, Hollywood would be a better option. But, um, turns out I personally didn't care for the food at Hollywood. However, the crazy thing is that they have a vending machine area that has cold sandwiches or cold food options mainly sandwiches and a, like a communal microwave which that was another thing that sold me for Hollywood because Sam's Town doesn't have microwaves in the rooms Hollywood doesn't have microwaves in the rooms but they had that microwave I remember that microwave being there from previous years I don't remember the vending machines but I remember the microwave and I was like you know that microwave is very convenient I mean the rooms have little mini fridges but you know I'm the type of person when I eat I usually can't eat a whole meal at one time so I'll save it and eat it later and so microwave was kind of like one of those things where I'm like mm, it helps to have the microwave so anyway they have this vending machine that had like you could get like cold burgers or like um, different wraps of food um, like one thing I got was a chicken chipotle pepper jack wrap <laughs> it was really good um and then they had like ham sandwiches turkey sandwiches uh they had little pizzas like little breadstick pizza um just different stuff like that so all that stuff was like four dollars which is more than what i would normally pay for like an individual little package thing but actually it's not a bad deal for a hamburger um or but you know for it, I had some chicken tenders there from the little Hollywood cafe or whatever they call it. I paid like $14, actually more like $15 or something, maybe even $16 for the whole meal. Chicken tenders were meh. Like they weren't great. Um, the, the sauce options, which I'm really big about, really particular about my sauce. Like I'm not super picky, but I am kind of picky about my sauce I dip my chicken into. 
love honey mustard, but I wasn't a fan of the honey mustard they had. They had honey mustard, barbecue, or ranch sauce. And ranch, I normally like ranch, but I'm burned out on it. And it can be kind of iffy. And barbecue sauce can be kind of iffy too, because, I mean, there's a whole variety of barbecue sauce out there too. Like, I personally like sweet barbecue sauce. Sweet or sweet and spicy barbecue type of sauce. But, anywho. So, I just was not impressed. It's just... <laughs> It just wasn't great chicken, let's put it that way. It was okay chicken, but for the price, it was not great. Like, it would have been okay if it was maybe like a 5 or $6 meal, but not for what I paid for it. And I was like, no, nah, I ain't, no. I was like, I'm going to gamble and try the vending machine. Love the vending machine, okay? So, um, I, if I was to do it again, I would stay at Hollywood again and just do the vending machine and forget the little cafe thing. Just saying. Just saying. Um, and my dad agreed that he loved the hamburger. <laughs> um, he actually, they also, they had a catfish that he liked at the cafe. I'm calling it cafe. I could be very wrong. It may not have even been a cafe. Whatever it was that was there at the casino. Um, but that was like a 16 or $17 meal. I mean, for catfish, it's probably not bad. But I'm just saying, if you're just trying to be budget friendly... <laughs> Penny machines the way to go. I'm gonna have a lot of fun editing this. Um, so for the actual casinos, first night went to Sam's Town. Didn't have any luck really. Um, yeah, just I was. I mean, the first time I ever went to Tunica, Sam's Town was where I hit it big. And by big, I mean like I won. I came home with like $160 extra. <laughs> that I on top of what I had originally brought so I won back all my money plus $160 um and that was primarily the bulk of it like I'd say like $140 of that was from Sam's Town and from my favorite slot game of all time Kitty Glitter which I've learned that Kitty Glitter is hard to come by these days like I've it's rare that I'm finding it in casinos. So, and the last time we were at Sam's Town when I was with my friends, I couldn't find it. Which, they had completely rearranged everything and I looked around and I could not find it. I mean, it doesn't mean that it's not there, but I'm just saying, I couldn't find it there. So, that was a bust. Um, it just, I don't, I don't see any reason to go back to Sam's Town anymore. And because during the day, like after we got settled into the, um, hotel and everything we took advantage of the pool and the hot tub and the pool was so cold that we just took advantage of the hot tub because I mean you're paying the resort fee um, get your money's worth out of the pool and hot tub <laughs> I'm just saying and plus I didn't want to like be spending all my time in the casino and just blowing through my money so we decided we got our food we did the pool hot tub thing Got our food, took our merry little time to eat, and then that night went just went across the street to Sam's Town. Um, I would recommend driving <laughs> there. Like, it's a half mile walk, and I wanted to walk because I don't. Me driving at night is not a good thing, but I just didn't feel safe because once you get so far out in Hollywood's parking lot, like you go beyond a point, it's just open. It's like, it, there's like some trees and whatnot, and it's kind of like open area, and like, I don't, I would think that they would have cameras in the parking lot, but because everything's kind of run down in Tunica, I don't know. Uh, I, it just didn't feel safe, like, who's to say that a car can pull up and like, rob you and then drive away and there wouldn't be anybody around, like, to call for help. So, I'm just, didn't feel safe about it. Probably nothing to worry about. Usually I don't worry about stuff like that, but just, I, it just felt deserted that I didn't want to take any chances, so let's just hop in the car and go that way. Um, yeah. So, that was that night. Um, the next day we did the whole Clark Stell thing, and then after we came back, uh, we, um, we went over to Horseshoe and Gold Strike, which this is the other casino that they, I heard that they had tore it completely down, but 
the structure is still there and the roof is still there. It's Roadhouse. And I don't know why they tore, like, why Roadhouse went out, what the deal is with that. But because I, from my memory, like, I've only been there the first two times I went to um, Tunica. It was nice. We liked Roadhouse. Roadhouse was good. Um, but then my dad brought up a point. Uh, the last night that we were at Hollywood Casino, I noticed on the, um, where the air conditioning was, the return vent was kind of down towards the bottom of the ground and it had black mold on it. And then he later figured, like, I told him that there had been issues of flooding in the past and I think that's why Harris had shut down like there had been a Harris out there that was before my time but I heard something about Harris having shut down because it got flooded so bad but I it could just be the business aspect of why they shut down but I think it got flooded I think they all got flooded or many of them got flooded at one point in the last 10 or so years um so he was saying maybe it was his what he pieced together was it probably had so much damage, like black mold damage to them, like with it being there by the Mississippi River and a humid climate and whatnot, it probably just have so much black mold damage that they just have to tear them down. So, just saying. Um, yeah, so went to Horseshoe because everybody's raving about Horseshoe, it seems like. Like, everything in recent history that I've come across like on a certain message board people are like loving horseshoe and I know like now it's with Caesars I don't the last time I was there I don't think they were partnered with Caesars um they could have been but I don't remember them being a Caesars casino <coughs> so I was kind of excited about going to road I mean horseshoe and I remember that was a good one the last time we were there when I was there with my friends it was pretty good enjoyed it um and they also, that's the only casino that I think that still has where you can order the drinks from the slot machine, like while you're playing. You can get drinks while you're playing slots from any of the casino, like there's waitresses going around, but I don't know if they're considered free drinks, but at least with the slot machine, as long as you're playing, which what I used to do is put the bet at a penny, find a machine where you can put the bet down to a penny, just take your sweet precious time hitting that button and get your free drink that way um if, of course it's not free but it's inexpensive anywho so that's what i discovered first about it so i was like okay cool well let's uh do a little gambling before we get into that mode of doing the penny bets and getting the drink so um pretty much every machine that my dad and i went to bust like didn't even win I, if I won anything, it might have been like 25 cents off of like a 88 cent bet. I was like, I'm not feeling this. Like, I, I had a limit for each casino, like a set amount of money for each casino that I would play. But I was like, if I'm not getting anything within so many spins, I'm cutting it. So... And he was kind of the same way. Usually he's more cautious about gambling, but he got a little over, he went a little overboard more so than he normally does. We kind of switch places. So, um, yeah, neither of us won anything. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It was just a total bust. Like, I, it's just, I've never had that bad of experience at a casino. Um, and I was so frustrated. I was like, let's just get out of here and go to Gold Strike. I didn't even, at that point, I was just, I didn't even care about the little drink anymore. <laughs> Which I wanted a drink. <laughs> I wanted a drink. That's just, a, when you go to Tunica, I want at least, like, one drink from a casino, okay? Um, but I, I was, again, so frustrated. I was like, forget this. <laughs> I'm done. Let's go to Gold Strike. So I went over to Gold Strike, and it just, um... I pretty much had the same luck. I think he won. I think that's where he won a little bit of his money back. I think he had played two 20s and he won one of his 20s back. And that's when I was like, let's just, it's like, you better pocket that. Just go ahead and pocket that. But um, one thing I noticed 
all the casinos with the exception of Sam's Town, when you go to put your voucher into the machine and get your money, they don't give back change. Sam's Town gave back change, but the other casinos didn't. And I didn't realize, like, that at first that's what was going on. And then, then I realized that was, was what was going on. And then I think Gold Strike, Horseshoe didn't do it. Horseshoe just gave you a little receipt, but Gold Strike printed out a little voucher for your change. So whatever you didn't get back in dollars, it would print out a voucher for change. So you could either take that up to the cashier or you could put it in the machine. So I just put it in the machine. I didn't want to deal with the cashier, okay? Just over it, ready to go. Went back to Hollywood. Um, and then when we played at Hollywood, oh gosh, I was, yeah, my dad went a little overboard there. Um, Cause on Facebook, they show people who win different jackpots, like over a thousand dollars. They'll put them up on Facebook and show the machine and their bets and everything. And so he had just this good feeling that he was gonna win. But I was down to my last few dollars that I had designated for the casino and I was ready to give up. I was just like, I'm done. I'm just going to cash in and, you know, cash in my losses, whatnot. Um, but as we were, and I walked around the casino the night before just to get a feel for it. Um, and when I was just like, I'm done, I saw a machine that looked kind of like it was part of the kitty litter family like the, you know the the company that makes kitty litter i was like hold up wait a minute i didn't see this last night and so i walked around and on the back side was my kitty glitter did i say kitty litter before I, my dad keeps calling it kitty litter so i've been calling it kitty litter instead of kitty glitter um yeah so found my kitty glitter so i was like ah man i was like well at this point I, let's just let's just go for it I'm not if like forget cutting my losses I'm just I'm ready to lose it all just so I can play my my game I was like oh ah, kitty glitter so uh yeah um wasn't looking so good I was winning a little bit here and there not so much so then I was like ah oh, heck let me just I was like down to my last little bit but I was like let me just bump up my bet to a dollar fifty which I wouldn't normally do that for any machine, but I've done it in the past with Kitty Glitter. It's been good to me in the past. So it's like, we're just going to go for it. So hit that button. Won back my money. Won back everything I had lost that night at Hollywood off of Kitty Glitter. Kitty Glitter never lets me down. So yeah. So anyway, I cashed it in and got my little voucher for my change. And so I just went back and played the change on Kitty Glitter. It's like, whatever. <laughs> So, I, I was, I, yeah, that's, that's another reason why I would go back to Hollywood, just because they got kitty glitter. Um, otherwise, I am done with Tunica. Just, I, mm. now, I wanted to go to Fitz, but at that point, like, for the trip, I, especially after um, Horseshoe and Gold Strike, I was I, over it over it was not in the mood i was like forget this let's just go back to where we're staying hollywood i was like we'll just wait for the night time to play at hollywood and yeah <laughs> so i got plenty of footage of walking around most of the attractions at hollywood like most of the displays however i think that there was like a area like a wall that i didn't go to that had some stuff but i at the time it was late at night and I was walking around with just my camera in my hand and I didn't want to like alert the security or make the security have to like feel like they have to watch me walk through the casino to go to that section just to film it so I I was just like whatever um plus I wanted to go back upstairs and start packing for well so that we could leave the next morning <laughs> so um yeah oh yeah and going back to the whole Aussie show stuff I figured out how to record a video from my MacBook and then I found out that you could not do at least as far as I know 
I couldn't figure out how to do audio and video simultaneously through the computer. So <coughs> I had to go back and do the audio separately. And then when I got everything synced up, I noticed that the volume was extremely quiet or extremely low on the audio. And then I started to realize that, um, you could hear me digging into my bag of snacks and then popping open a can of Pringles and munching on my Pringles. You awake? Yeah, I'm recording. Uh, it's five This is another thing. I may leave this in just for the heck of it, just to show. <laughs> Every time I would be recording, I would let my dad know. At first he would say, you should film this for YouTube. I'd be like, I plan on filming it for YouTube. And then I would tell him, like, hey, I'm going to record this. Okay, I'm getting ready to record this. I got my camera out, I'm getting ready to record this. Okay, I'm recording this. And then I'd be recording and talking, and then he would come over and be like, what, huh? What thing in that I was talking to him? I think this is why I don't do videos as often, especially when I'm out doing stuff, because most of the time he's with me these days to get him out of the house, and because we're mainly running errands that he needs to run anyway. I, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's just part of these videos. <laughs> so, um, that was another instance where he just, instead he thought that I was asleep, and I'm like, no, I'm recording. <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, so when I was trying to do the audio, I realized that, um, it, it wasn't recording from the audio, like, from the, I, I guess in my mind it would record internally the audio, like, like the way you would hear it come through the speakers, but no, I figured out that, or I realized that the audio it was recording was from the microphones built into the MacBook. So what it was recording was what it like what from what I was hearing coming through the speakers as well as <laughs> everything around that it could pick up like me munching on my chips. <laughs> so I was like, well, um, that's interesting. Um, so uh, that's, that, we're just, um, just leaving it as is that's that's it so I think I'm gonna wrap this up now because I've been talking way too much way much more than I thought it would be I thought it'd just be snap 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 explanation okay we're done no anywho so I hope everybody's doing well and hope all these prices go down soon so we can all actually get out and enjoy life it, it's sad like now that we can actually get out and do things you know that a lot of the restrictions have been dropped <sighs> of course gas would have to go up in price inflation has to happen food everything else in the world goes up in price I mean whatever um still hoping for this Vegas trip to happen uh, at this point we're looking at possibly flying out there wanted to road trip because it's fun more fun to road trip and you get a little more control of things but again the price of gas I don't even though I can afford to do it I don't want to just throw money away like it, it's ridiculous and then with food and everything being up in price too so it looks like if you book ahead like far enough in advance that you can get flights for about what it would cost and just gas alone to drive out there so it's only like it claims that it's like a four hour flight from here to Vegas so that cuts down like a road trip it's going to take at least two days if not three or four I think we took like three yeah, I know we spent two nights going there because I really I overdid it I I probably should have, we probably should have done it in three nights because I wore myself out that first, that first stretch. Um, I was up for over 24 hours. 
not necessarily driving for 24 hours, but I'd been up awake for over 24 hours and it was, it was not good. <laughs> you can look in the video and see how awful I looked after that. Um, yeah, it, it, I don't want to do it that way again. Um, anyway, but a four hour flight would cut out the need for having to stop and eat along the way and stay overnight at various places so that would probably be the more wise decision plus that way we wouldn't have to worry about being away from Tuki for so long because she even being gone for like two nights she gets a little I don't know I guess she gets worried um she's a very social cat she doesn't like being left alone so Anyway, um, yeah, so I hope everybody's doing well, and I hope things are getting better for everybody, hopefully. Yeah, so, uh, be back soon.